In these strange times, we know that many people will be looking to produce video content from home. Here are seven top tips from the Cardiff University Film Unit to help you get going. To save hours of editing time, we would always recommend scripting, or at least heavily structuring your video from the outset. Time spent doing this will be paid back in terms of time saved overall. As part of the scripting stage, you'll also want to start thinking about visuals, images, video clips, or PowerPoint slides that might be played over the top of the video. Modern phones and tablets record high quality video, so most people are perfectly equipped to capture decent looking images. Sound is another matter, we'll come to that later. You can use a webcam, but the quality is normally worse than a phone or tablet. In some instances, recording a video using Microsoft Teams or Zoom may be adequate, but the quality compromise needs to be considered in terms of your eventual audience and the lifespan of the video. We won't be covering recording in Teams or Zoom in this guide, and also won't be covering streaming. When using a phone or tablet, the rear-facing camera is normally much better quality, so we would suggest using this wherever possible. You'll need a stand of some kind to hold your phone or tablet. You can buy different options online, or an egg box makes a good homemade substitute. Always try and shoot the video with the phone on its side, landscape mode, as this is the format preferred for most video sites. Your phone may give the option of filming in 4K, but there's a good chance your computer won't be able to edit such high quality footage, so we would suggest selecting 1080p or Full HD as the shooting format. Video uses a lot of storage space, so shoot a short test clip to calculate how much space you'll need before you start. The single biggest factor in making your video feel professional will be sound quality. If you want to film yourself talking to camera, you don't want to rely on the microphone in your phone, which will sound distant and tinny. The only option in these instances, without recording on a separate device, is to use a microphone that plugs into your phone or tablet. An example is the Rode SmartLav Plus, but please note not all computers, phones and tablets have the same connector, so check compatibility. This is a demo to show the difference between recording sound on the phone and recording sound on a separate microphone on my shirt here. An alternative option is to record your voiceover separately and then add in visual elements afterwards. The advantage with this approach is that you can use a higher quality USB mic that plugs directly into your computer with options ranging from £15 upwards online. A good idea is to look for microphones designed for podcasts. To record voiceover on your computer, use a video editing package, more on these later, or try downloading Audacity, which is open source and free. You want to record audio in an environment with as little reverb or echo as possible, so a bedroom with bedding and soft furnishings to absorb the sound is a better option than a kitchen with hard surfaces. You can also add extra pillows, blankets, or toilet rolls, we know you've got them, to help dampen the sound further. In addition, you want to record away from extraneous sound sources, as it's very difficult to remove these when editing later. When filming, you generally want an even, soft light on your subject. Your camera will struggle with strong, hard sunlight, so net curtains are a good option for diffusing the light, or try a shower curtain. You also want to avoid strong light behind you, as this will result in your face appearing in shadow. Wherever possible, avoid mixing types of light as well, so try and use just sunlight or the lights in your room, but preferably not both at the same time. Think about your recording space, and make sure that there is nothing private, confidential or revealing behind you as you film. For example, pictures of family or a controversial film poster. Finally, have a test run. So many problems can crop up when you're filming, the easiest way to make sure everything is working is to record a 30 second test clip, and then check it before you start shooting for real. Once you've got the technical aspects covered, you need to consider how you're going to make your video engaging. At a very basic level, you can export slides from PowerPoint and add these to your video, but there's plenty of other options to consider that might be more effective. Using a couple of stools or chairs and two broom or mop handles, you can make a basic overhead rig to record demonstrations with your hands. You might use this to write and make illustrations or show pieces of equipment or a specific demonstration. There are many apps now available to make stop frame animations. These can be time consuming to make, but will add a lot of value to your video. Just ensure the camera is fixed in place before you start. Bluetack is a good option to help with this. Most cameras now have a time lapse function built in that can be used for condensing a large amount of time into a few seconds. Equally, you might want to slow time down, and most cameras have a slow motion function which works well. 
Many cameras have effects options built in, or these can be added afterwards in your editing program. Just have a careful think about why you want to choose a particular effect before applying it to all your shots. There are many free libraries for sound effects and music, with YouTube Creator Studio being a good starting point. Just make sure any sound, music, images or video clips you use are royalty free. A few well-placed sound effects can be extremely effective, or try recording your own. Editing is likely to prove the biggest challenge for most people in terms of both computing requirements and basic skills. For starters, you'll need editing software, and there are some good free options available. In terms of built-in programs, iMovie is likely to be the best solution for most Mac users. Unfortunately, the built-in Windows 10 option, simply called Video Editor, is much more basic and won't be suitable for anything but the most simple of videos. For beginners, we suggest a cross-platform video editing software package called OpenShot. For more advanced users, we would suggest looking at Lightworks, HitFilm Express, or Shotcut. And at the high end, we would suggest DaVinci Resolve, which is also free, but has a steep learning curve and heavy system requirements. For tutorials on how to use any of these software packages, have a search on YouTube. When it comes to exporting your video, we would suggest the format MP4, also called H.264, and export at 1080p resolution, also called Full HD. YouTube is the best way to share and distribute video content for external audiences, as it's free, cross-platform, and searchable. Also, videos from YouTube can be embedded in most applications, including Learning Central. If your school has a dedicated YouTube channel and the content is of sufficient quality, then having your video uploaded to this channel may be the best option. We would discourage uploading content to personal YouTube channels to avoid brand confusion. If your video is for teaching purposes or an internal university audience, upload it directly to Learn Plus and share from there or via Learning Central. Happy shooting from the Cardiff University Film Unit.